Hello and uh, welcome to part three of this uh, mystery amp, mystery tube amp, because we had a mystery solid state amp as well didn't we. So if you remember in part two we'd got this amp up and running but we'd got problems with all this tone stack not being very great and uh, we was looking at either putting a 12x7 into this amp or on the first stage we've got an EF86 at the moment or keeping the EF86 so customers decided he wants to just go with the EF86 and a single input and I think that's the way to go because that's the way I, I would have gone with it I think um, so we're going to what we're going to do and what we've already started to do now because I already loosened all these off we're going to strip out all of this all of these pots, uh, everything on here, and then <clears throat> we're going to look at getting a simple volume and a tone in this, as, and a single input. That way, that the, the more we can get rid of what we don't need, the less noise we're going to have with this amp. Now we we need to change this tube socket on this for this EF86. I'm just going to turn it over so we can have a bit of a look there so this this ef86 here this this socket is absolutely foobar we're going to change that but we've got this octal hole underneath so i've bought a little round piece of steel to go over that and we're going to bolt that over and then re-drill it so it's 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 neat and secure that looks it's just it's a bit botching if we just go over and have a look you can see it's a bit a bit botch so we're going to sort that out as well and then this amp should be ready to put back together once we've got all that done And this is so fr brittle and fragile, it's already had a crack down the middle, <laughs> that's just falling apart. It's just that pot must have been holding that together, you see there. But we'll just have to put that back on as it is, there's nothing we can do. Very, very delicate that, it's just cracked with age. Right, I've just had a brainwave. Instead, of, seeing as we've got an octal hole, we could fit an octal socket. Now this is a 6J8, it's a Russian 6J8. I've got a few of these, not a lot, but a few of them. And this is a 6SJ7 equivalent. And I thought that would be excellent for this amp. But something a bit different as well, instead of the boring old EF86. Not that I've got anything against EF86, but I just thought this would be a bit different so I'm going to fit this I've tested it and uh, they're brand new but I've still tested it um, bought these ages ago ages ago probably two or three years ago maybe they've just sat but uh, yes we're going to use that and these aren't expensive either so it's not like we're fitting something for the customer that's going to cost him 50 pounds that's they're quite cheap right we're ready to fire this up see if it works so we've got the 6j8 or the 6sj7 in there so i'm just going to fire this up we know all the the output stage and everything works okay let's switch on monitoring the voltage it's coming up now There we go, very quiet. 350 volts on the centre tap. Let's have a look what's on the plate. What we got on there? 336 on the screens. 
Late is pin seven there. 3.42, quite a highish plate voltage, not bad though, not too bad, not as high as the, uh, there's a, a Marshall I've um, got waiting for parts at the minute, a DSL 201 with a whopping 395 volts on the plates, and it's over biased at that. Right, let's see what we've, what's cooking with this 6J7 then. So we've got 148 on the plate. What we got on the screen? And 112, that's uh, good enough for me. Wow, that's night and day from what it was before. Amps absolutely silent when you turn it down. Now I've only got it on a smallish speaker, mind you. Just got the scope on going on this. And uh, I've just done the maths. We've got about 9.8 watts coming out of this amp. There are a few problems I had to sort out. But I've sorted those. Nothing major. So wondering if we can get a bit more out of this. And one thing that we don't have on this 6J8 is a bypass cap. Now I have one here, which I'm just going to test to ground. So you probably can't see close up onto that a scope, but we've got... I've got about 30 volts, 31, 32 volts peak to peak. Now I'm just going to drop this on there. That's given me 35 volts peak to peak. Just clean, clean that up. So, and if we look, at, so what I, what I did there, put the car, the bypass cap on and turn the volume to where it, it, it was actually the cleanest and that's given us 34 if I take that off we've only got 20 now because obviously I, I turned the volume down and I think that'll probably do as you know actually we do have a bypass cap on there but it's only 100 nanofarad which isn't very loud which, uh, which isn't a lot so I think I'm going to put a 22 across there and I think that'll get us about where we want to be with this amp and we should be able to take it and stick it on the 4B12 and have a listen. Right, we've fitted that. That's not actually given us much more wattage to be fair. What it has done though, it's... it's um, made the, the amp overdrive easier because it was pretty clean all the way to the top so we've got 12 and a half watts of bias on the bias so that's the dissipation and we're getting about 9.7 watts out of this don't think we're going to get any more out of it but that's okay to be fair, the speaker that is is really old on this amp, so souping it up, trying to get more out of it, is probably not a great idea. And we're okay with that. Let's go and have a listen. Right, so we've got this mystery tube amp that we've completely rewired in the end. Listen. Thank you. 
That really has. It sounds great. That uh, Russian 6SJ7 in there on the first stage is really, for me, that's just really made this amp. It just sounds great with that in it. Superb bit of kit. It's took a, a lot of fiddling around to get it right, but we got there in the end. So that'll do it for this one. So thanks for watching. You all take care, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye bye for now.